Hello, my name is Duncan and welcome to Baft Books and Back Away From The Donkey. And this is one of my pick and videos, which is basically, well, it sounds like anything, <laughs> anything that I can think about. Uh, it's normally roughly what I've been reading in the past week and any other bits. Uh, it's actually really sunny out there at the moment, but I think overnight, whoever controls the weather was having a joke on us because uh, we leapt forward into British summertime and there was snow on the ground this morning when I got up. So somebody's having a joke somewhere. But anyway, my um, reading's been a bit slow the past couple of weeks, uh, two to three weeks. I've not really read huge amounts and I've got some stuff that I'm sort of in the middle of. Uh, I have watched a couple of great, I've sort of gone binge watched a few things on Netflix that I've not uh, seen. If anybody gets a chance to see uh, Travellers or Timeless, if you like some time travel on Netflix, definitely recommend both those to watch them. They're very interesting time travel uh, things. But yeah, but back to the books. Uh, as I was saying, it's what I've been reading recently. I'm still reading. I'm just slowly, this is, so it's probably going to be reading this all year. Because I'll just be reading little bits of chapters at a time, which is uh, Mike Ashley's story. British science fiction in 100 novels. I'm going to read a couple of the books that he's mentioned in here that I've not read next. Um, I was going to read The Outlaws of the Air by George Griffith soon, but I'm not sure at the moment because I've got an interest to weirdly read The um, Mask of Zorro, <laughs> which, is, which is a bit strange. But, yeah. The other books that I've been reading this is taking me a while to read actually is Michael Scott Rowan's The Anvil of Ice which I finally finished and I'll just show you a couple of, still a wonderful cover and what's really interesting about this is so it's a fantasy uh it was written in what well, it was released in 87 so it was part of the fantasy sort of resurgence of early to mid 80s and also late 80s a bit as well uh, sort of a few years after Raymond Fight Magician and stuff. And it's very, very different. It's so I'm gonna do a full video on it, but it's very I found it quite hard going, but not the fact that I don't want to read it, but it was just it's written like a, almost like a history, like somebody's reporting saying what's happened before. None of the characters are particularly likable <laughs> at all. Uh, and they're all sort of very uh to coin a phrase that is used for the pseudo genre of grim dark sorry i think it doesn't exist but uh it the characters are very morally gray but what's interesting about it is all the um world building is the world that there is there's a in the north there's a sheet of ice and this ice is almost a character and alive itself with all the sort of impending evil that it's bringing along uh and we're following a boy who's basically taken from his original home where he's an orphan. They're always orphans, I know. They're always orphans in these things. Uh, to work with his master smith. And he's just following his story. And I said, it is a bit of a slog. But not a slog in a bad way, but in quite a good way. But I did start reading it. I've got the second book in this series, which I'm not going to read immediately. I got towards the sort of the back a third back sort of quarter of the book and the plot felt like it was pulling together a lot more and also in the back of it I'll try and put the marker in there no, I'll put the marker in there is you've got appendices uh, you're talking about the authors of the Winter Chronicles is what they call it so it's like somebody has written a, this book about a history but in this you've got um Lots of the background of the actual land that is involved. I just want to find a picture that was in here. I thought, am I thinking of something else? Ah, oh, no, there is. You've got like, pictures of the boats that they talk about in this. It's quite intriguing. It's all quite intriguing premise. And it feels to me like he almost went out of his way to try and make it not anything like any of Tolkien's work. Because everybody post-Tolkien is influenced by Tolkien. And it's very hard to, you know, not think of anything original, but to sort of distance yourself. And it feels like uh, Michael Scott Rowan attempted to really, really distance himself. But I'm actually really sort of 
interested to get onto the second book, but it's probably going to be a couple of months before I get onto that because I'm just going to have a little bit of a break. Sorry, I feel like I've just dribbled or something. So yeah, and I was reading Jack Vance's Tales of the Dying Earth. I was getting onto the second book, which I can't remember his name off the top of my head. The Eyes of the Other World. I've not started this yet. I'm going to start this this week, the second book, because I want to get a video out on that. So yeah, that's how lax I've been. But if you saw my videos on the box of books, the infamous box of books, I'm going to leave a link to it down below. Um, one of the books that was in there was With Useless Children, uh, Robert Heinlein. This is my... And if you look at the other videos, you'll tell the story of this, but this is my original copy, the copy that I first ever read this story in, and I reread it this week. Uh, and yeah, so Heiner's always a nice easy read. This, as I said, I think if I remember rightly, was when it was published, was published in a, a magazine. There's two parts to it. So you get about, it's quite a short book. There's a lot of them are around about this period. 170-ish pages. And in some ways, it feels like two separate books. And I think the first half is a lot stronger than the second half. It's not my favourite Highland, but it's very enjoyable. Um, I I think my favourite Highland novel, weirdly, is um, Job, A Comedy of Justice, which I think is just a stunning. One of his better, one of his last, not one of his last books, one of his real later books. But yeah, so I read Refuseless Children this week. It took me about a day and a half because I already got into it. But I do love these covers. I'm a big fan of the 80s covers. New English Library version, that is. And when I bought this, it cost me one pound ninety five in nineteen back into the eighties, early nineties, probably. Uh, it was published in eighty six, so I probably bought it at the back of the eighties, mid to the back of the eighties. So yes, Robert Heinen, always worth reading some Heinen. And the other thing I've just started, because I'm on to reading not easier stuff, just stuff that one, which was is a. Time Masters by Wilson Tucker, which has this wonderful cover, which I'm still not sure has got anything at all to do with the book. And this is about a detective almost. I will read the stops on the back. Gilbert Nash has no past. Secret Service authorities in charge of security for the top secret Ridge Runner project. Don't believe that. Everybody has a path, they reason. The trouble is Gilbert Nash passed. They just wouldn't believe even if you told them. It is a path wrapped in the project. First attempt to send a spacecraft beyond the solar system. And the death of what Ridge Runner's top scientists a few days after seeing Nash doesn't calm security at all. But there's something else pretty weird going on. The dead scientist's wife doesn't seem to have a past either. And she has disappeared. It's quite an interesting book at the moment. The first paragraph to me is one of the best first paragraphs of any science fiction book I've read for a little while. Um... And I think the rest of the book could be struggling to keep up with that. Uh, I will read the first paragraph to you, if you can put up with me reading to you. And it's, He fell slowly through the black and colourless vacuum, which still lacked sufficient substance to be called a sky, a suited figure pin pinwheeling down in ridiculous fashion towards the planet below. A strange sun and even stranger stars turned about him in a kaleidoscopic effect. His ship had been hulled. And to me, that's, that's an opening paragraph for a good science fiction book. That was really, really good. Uh, the reason I got into Wilson Tucker, um, I picked this book up, is I've been looking at the Hugo Award winners. And surprisingly, an awful lot of the stuff is out of print or very difficult to get hold of. Uh, Wilson Tucker, so I won't have a ring, wrote The Year of the Quiet Sun, which won in 1971 or 72. Uh, around about there uh, and he's quite an interesting writer because if you actually look at his history he wrote lots of um, mystery and action books so he wasn't just um, specifically a science fiction writer uh, so the year of the quiet sun I really need to get hold of a copy uh, so I'm intrigued to read that because this is turning uh, so I've only read about 50 pages uh, so I'll probably finish that the next day or so I'll probably read another 50 or so today but it's it's an enjoyable book at the moment, so I'm really interested to read the one that won the Nebula, not Nebula, the Hugo. Uh, so that should be quite good. So that is probably all my roundup of all the stuff I've been reading. Um, as I said, I released yesterday a video which was a follow up to my one about the box of books I received. 
Okay, and it's just a fascinating story because they are, in fact, in my books. It's a really weird story. So I'm considering probably doing a little series of the books and stuff that were in that box and my memories of them and a little bit about the books and my history with them and just where I'm, just stuff about them and stuff about, them. well, the ones I can remember because there's some stuff in that box that I can't remember at all. So if anybody's interested in seeing that, just mention it down below because uh, I'll probably do it anyway, but um, I'm sort of just quite fascinated about the whole of that situation. I said there's two videos. There's the original one when I got the box and then there's the follow-up one yesterday. And I'm going to put them in a playlist, which I will call What's in the Box. And I will link to that below so you can get to see both the videos if you've not already seen them. Uh, but yeah, it's a... It is quite a fascinating story. I've also got video coming out. I'm in the middle of editing the one about the future of books, which I've really quite enjoyed making, but there's a load of editing, which I don't particularly like. And I said, I need to get on top of, I still got the Blade Runner to enter a stream ones to finish, but I said, because I was ill the week before last and it sort of dragged into this week. Um, I'm way behind, but I'm just enjoying making the odd video and stuff. And also if anybody, if the person who um, liked my, live stream <laughs> is watching just say hi um i have got enough subscribers to do a live stream but i was playing around with the live stream connections and what have you and i was accidentally posting something live and um somebody liked it too, even though it was me bumbling around but yeah which i found quite funny uh but yeah that's it it's quite a short pick and mix to me uh i'm gonna pop out into the sunshine soon and take one of my dogs for a walk is it yorkie or the labrador do we take Probably the mad Labrador, though. She looks fast asleep down there. Um, oh, yeah, as I said, I'm going to finish the Time Masters this week. And I might dip into that box of books. I'm not really sure what I'm going to do after that. But I need to get on to the second of the um, Dying Earth books because I want to do the second follow-up video of that. And um, the rest of you, um, enjoy reading this week. And I will speak to you all very soon.